Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Live at Four. Mark is in Cartagena, Colombia today. Oh, I feel so no. sorry for him. <laughs> and you and I are here. We are here in the cold, yes. in the ice. Oh, yeah, that freezing rain today it got has tricky. been very tricky. We'll get an update on that from Dana in just a second. But here's what's making news this Thursday. The latest Marquette Law School poll has been released, and it says Wisconsin's thoughts on impeachment haven't changed all that much. Those results are being released as the House Judiciary Committee prepares to vote on articles of impeachment. Plus, a woman has been arrested after allegedly attacking a staff member at a Madison school. Let's look outside to that ice and cold that we were talking about earlier. You can see the ice right there, enough to fish on, apparently. Maybe we should check on the safety conditions for that. Could be a few slick spots, though. Susan and I know it as well. Let's check in with Dana. How's the patio? A little slick out there? Right now, the patio is okay, but we've got that brick pattern, so it works a little better <laughs> for us out here. But yes, yeah, some salt definitely necessary on those smoother sidewalks and even just some roads around Madison. I noticed the salt trucks driving when I came back from my break. Some spots are, are pretty okay, others not so much. So just feel uh, or drive a little slower. Give yourself a little extra time if you can on the roads. Here's a live look right now, mostly cloudy sky. Our high resolution Doppler is quiet though. Today we did have some freezing drizzle at times. Some folks seeing some light flurries as well. Temperature wise, we are above average right now at 37 in Madison, closer to 41 though in Janesville. So that's where we saw more of the mixed precipitation, a little rain coming through. Tomorrow we will also see temperatures in the mid to upper 30s, but heading into next week, the big cool down returns. We start to feel a little more like December, but we'll take a closer look at what's ahead for the weekend and next week in just a few minutes. Right now, here's a look at Washington. And Stoughton Road. More people getting on the roads. Things starting to get a little more backed up, especially on the eastbound side of the Beltline. Westbound doesn't look too bad right now, but those speeds reduce, stretching uh, past Fish Hatchery through John Nolan also. Downtown Middleton, okay. A little, little backed up, though, on 14, where it splits from 12. Wanakee should be smooth and 39 all the way down to the state line right now looks smooth as well. Janesville to the belt line 25 minutes, 17 minutes to get from Sox City to Middleton and 16 minutes to get from Sun Prairie to downtown this evening. Not looking at any more precipitation this evening. That's the good news, but again, still a few slick spots on the roads right now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I can speak from experience that the roads are no joke this afternoon. Law enforcement are warning all of us to be careful after a crash along High, High Point Road. It happened on that bridge that goes over the belt line there. Police report serious injuries associated with that crash, adding that bridges and overpasses all around the area are very icy this afternoon. Please be careful on your commute. There is breaking news just into the Channel 3000 Alert Center. The Middleton School District says the students behind a threat at the high school there earlier this week have been suspended. We just got an email from the uh, pr uh, public information person with that school district who says attendance was good at both of the schools that were closed because of that threat. And right now the uh, social media threat is still being looked into at this time. Again, we are just getting this into the newsroom here, and we'll be sure to have more details coming up later on 5 and at 6. And always online, of course, at channel3000.com. Also today, a woman is arrested after allegedly attacking a staff member at Orchard Ridge Elementary School. This happened early yesterday at the West Side Madison School. Eric Franke is in with the details on what police are saying about it. Eric? Well, Danica and Susan, it happened just before 9 a.m. yesterday morning. Witnesses say a woman came into the school. She wanted to to talk to several staff members about how her child had been disciplined at school. The victim in the case is one of those staff members the woman was looking for. And as she walked into that room, police say the suspect went after her, grabbed her hair, punched her and threw her to the ground. Uh, at that point, uh, the school staff member went into a fetal position trying to protect her face and her head. Uh, and the victim said at that point, uh, this mother continued to punch her, to kick her, and then it took other people who were in the office, other staff members, to pull this mother off of uh, the victim. And the victim was taken to an emergency room, treated for some facial and head injuries. The suspect left the school before police could arrive on scene, but they were able to locate her in the afternoon yesterday. She was taken into custody, facing charges of felony battery to a school employee and disorderly conduct. The arresting officer will ask the DA to ban the suspect, not just from Orchard Ridge, but from all Madison School properties. All right, Eric, thank you so You're much. Welcome.
President Trump joined his daughter to wrap up the White House summit on supporting America's working families. Ivanka Trump led the summit's discussions with a bipartisan panel debating policies on long-delayed paid family leave and affordable child care. President Trump highlighted a breakthrough earlier this week when congressional leaders reached a deal to offer 12 weeks of paid parental leave to federal workers. The president was joined on stage by two mothers who spoke about the importance of affordable child care. I wouldn't have been able to work and go to school to become a teacher. As a mother of three young children myself, I know that the hardest, most important, and most rewarding job on the planet is being a parent. As presidential advisor, Ivanka Trump has made working families her trademark issue. The House Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on articles of impeachment very soon, capping a second day of spirited debate. Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with more. The amendment is not agreed to. In a final show of political fireworks on the House Judiciary Committee, Republicans propose amendments to the articles of impeachment against President Trump. All are expected to fail, with Democrats outnumbering GOP members on the committee. The American people watching today know that this is an impeachment movement that is losing steam. No president is supposed to be a dictator in the United States. Lawmakers are considering two charges, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. If they pass out of committee, the articles face a full House vote likely next week. Democratic leaders say they're confident they have the votes to pass articles of impeachment, but a handful of Democrats could defect. This is a vote that people will have to come to their own conclusion on, and uh, the facts are clear, irrefutable, in fact. If you watch the impeachment inquiry, the only bipartisan vote was no. President Trump did not touch on impeachment at a White House event on child care and paid parental leave. But on Twitter, he called the hearing phony and retweeted arguments made by several Republican committee members. CBS News has learned the president is considering adding attorney Alan Dershowitz to his personal legal team if impeachment moves to a trial in the Republican-controlled Senate. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Wednesday night, the White House Budget Office released a detailed memo on the withholding of military aid to Ukraine, explaining the freeze was temporary and part of a regularly used procedure to determine the best possible use of those funds. The newest Marquette Law School poll results are being released today, showing not much has changed when it comes to how the public here in Wisconsin views impeachment. Madeline O'Neill can explain and tell us how the top Democratic candidates are faring in Wisconsin against President Trump. Maddie? Well, the results of this statewide poll come after public testimony and congressional impeachment hearings has finished up. But when comparing these December numbers to those from November, the percent of those supporting the impeachment and removal of President Trump has stayed the same at 40 percent. The percent opposing that has gone down 1 percent to 52, well within the margin of error. When it comes to head-to-head -to -head general election matchups between Trump and potential Democratic candidates, Polls in October had showed Democrats a bit ahead. That changed in November. And then in, no in November, we saw President Trump a little bit ahead. Um, again, mostly inside the margin of error, uh, but a bit of a lead. This month, it's tightened a little bit more. And all of the races, uh, just spoiler alert, all of the races are very, very close. Now, in December, this poll shows potential Democratic candidate Joe Biden ahead of Trump by 1 percent, but Trump ahead of potential candidates Bernie Sanders by 2 percent, excuse me, 2 points, Elizabeth Warren by 1 point, Buttigieg by 1 point, and Booker by 1. As far as how potential Democratic candidates are polling in the primaries, Biden is the first choice with 23 percent, leading Sanders, Warren, and Buttigieg, who round out the top four spots. Cory Booker trails at 4 percent. Now, two-thirds Democratic voters said in this poll they may still change their minds, so obviously a lot can still change. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot to unpack there. So Charles, oh, yeah. Charles is lot. going to be our guest here on Live at 4 tomorrow, and we'll break down more of the numbers. Perfect. Thanks, Madeline. Yeah. Well, there's more to come at 4 when we come back. The Madison Symphony Orchestra will get you in the holiday spirit this weekend. It's part of the Weekend 608, and grocery stores are taking big steps to go plastic-free. We'll have the latest on the zero waste movement when Live at 4 continues. For first, fast, accurate weather updates, watch First Alert Weather.
Major League Baseball's commissioner says more teams are expanding the netting at their ballparks to protect fans from foul balls. Rob Manfred says all 30 teams will have expanded netting for the 2020 season following multiple incidents where fans were hit by foul balls last season. In fact, a recent study found that in the past eight seasons, more than 800 spectators were injured by baseballs. Seven teams will expand netting all the way to the foul poles in the outfield. Others, including the Brewers, will expand it out to the sections where stands begin to angle away from the field. Well, the zero waste revolution is gaining steam as a number of grocery stores are doing away with plastic. So check this out. It's Connor Ben's first time at shopping at Clean Kilo in Britain's second largest city, Birmingham. But he knew he'd need his own containers. A vinegar bottle will now hold hand soap. Mom and daughter Kate and Olivia North traveled 30 minutes to get here. We're making a concerted effort to kind of cut down on packaging and plastic specifically, but any kind of packaging really. Jeanette Wong opened the Zero Waste store last year after she and her partner raised $26,000 through online crowdfunding. Customers don't seem to mind that some items cost more than at a big retail chain. The plastic-free concept is catching on, too. Clean Kilo just opened a second store in the city, and you can now find these kinds of supermarkets from places like Brooklyn all the way to Sicily. Every little bit helps, right? Yeah, that's definitely it. If you need a caffeine fix to get you going in the morning, that would be me. Pepsi has a new drink for you. It's called Pepsi Cafe. It has twice as much caffeine as a regular soda. The drink is a coffee-infused cola that will hit stores in the U.S. in April. Pepsi representatives say cola sales have actually been flat, and consumers are looking for drinks that provide some nutritional benefits or energy. Southwest Airlines has reached a deal with Boeing over lost revenue from the grounding of its 737 MAX planes. The carrier plans to share $125 million with employees. Southwest is the largest operator of 737 MAX planes. It had 34 in its fleet during the grounding following those two fatal crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia that killed 346 passengers. The Boeing 737 MAX has been grounded since March. Pilots for Southwest sued Boeing in October, saying that they lost more than $100 million in income because of the grounding. A good day for investors on Wall Street. After some positive news on the U.S.-China trade deal, the Dow Jones gained 220 points, the S&P gained 26, and the Nasdaq gained around 63 points. All right, it is Friday Eve, the weekend almost here in the 608. And here's a look at some of the things that are going on around town this weekend. And we'll begin with something that will definitely get you in the holiday spirit. The Overture Center for the Arts and the Madison Symphony Orchestra are hosting two Christmas carol sing-alongs this weekend. So fun. Yeah, the first is an annual ticketed event, a Madison Symphony Christmas. Each performance on Friday and Saturday night and Sunday afternoon will end with the entire entire audience invited to sing holiday favorites together. A separate event that's all about the singing of carols, attendees included, is the Saturday morning free community carol, Sing, led by Overture's principal organist, Greg Zalek. This, the symphony always does such a beautiful job I know, job and that. you miss them after concerts is done, it's right? True. Concerts on the square. In the holiday spirit of giving a day-long benefit show for local charities is taking place. This is happening Sunday at the High Noon Saloon. A little bit of a different tune here. The Recreational Rhythms Winter Ball is in its 15th year. It starts with a family-friendly block from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., which will feature David Lando and Better Yeti. And then from 5.30 to close, several bands, including Madtown, Manish Boys, and Vanessa Tortolano will keep an older crowd dancing. <laughs> the event is raised, by the way, more than $30,000 for organizations right here in our area. Very there cool. is an opportunity for the kids to get into the holiday spirit this month. That's right. Ulbricht's Holiday Express is on display until the end of the month. Large-scale model trains wind through holiday decorations, including hundreds of poinsettias 
and evergreens. I can borrow some of ours too if you're short yeah, on some. True. You can check it out from 10 to 4 every day over at Ulbrick Gardens. A little soon, but maybe next year you could take your new nephew to that. Oh, he would love he that. He would love that. A lot of colors and yeah, the things trains. moving. I know. The boys yeah. love the trains. And an <laughs> annual holiday tradition returns to the Dane County Regional Airport. Holiday tunes kick off Saturday with performances at the south end of the terminal. And then at 4 o'clock on Sunday, there will be a free community sing-along. We love singing together in this community. The live music will happen every day until next Sunday. Times of each performance can be found over on the airport's website. And that's just a small smattering <laughs> yeah. of the things happening around town. For more details, get this month's Madison Magazine for all the best of the Madison area. So there's more to come at four, including an interview with Hollywood legend Ed Astor. That's right, he's in Madison this week and then coming up tonight at five, why a former motel in Rock County has some people concerned about the criminal past of the people that are staying there. That story is coming up at five. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4. Well, take a look at this. You're watching an incredibly emotional moment between a father and a daughter. Richard was diagnosed with liver cancer and doctors said he needed a transplant to survive. The family discovered that his daughter, Tiffany, was a perfect match and she agreed to donate part of her kidney. This moment is the first time they've seen each other since they both underwent surgery to save his life. The family decided to share the video to help spread the word about the importance of organ donation. And we have even more good news. Richard is now cancer free. Oh, 
Very cool. All of the heartstrings. Oh, my God. I know, it says it all right there, yeah, doesn't it? That is beautiful. So you've read the news, you've seen what's trending. However, even we on this couch don't always say the words quite oh, right. Oh, really? I mean, we're not perfect? We're not perfect. <laughs> I certainly am not. Breaking I news. Should've, I should have just spoken for myself, <laughs> you ladies. <laughs> English is hard sometimes. So a group of people who write captioning for television broadcasts, bless their souls, <laughs> helped come up with the most mispronounced words of 2019. The site of the worst nuclear accident wasn't Chernobyl. It's actually pronounced Chernobyl. The proper way to uh, address teen activists in Time Magazine's Person of the Year, this was a little surprise for all of us, Greta Thunberg, instead of Greta. Yeah. I guess that's the English pronunciation of it. And of course, the often purple-haired <laughs> soccer champ that won the world title for the U.S. is Megan Rapino. 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 Yeah. See ya. Yeah. And Notre Dame may be okay for the Fighting Irish, but the French church is, that partially burned down is pronounced Notre Dame. Oh, so, so you said it right I the first it. time. Notre Dame is in Indiana. Notre Dame, Notre Dame okay. is in France. <laughs> so now, go. do you say poinsettia or poinsettia? Poinsettia. I, I, do do. Too, I do too, but I feel like the proper terminal. I said poinsettia earlier because I felt like it was proper. <laughs> so all of you, <laughs> let the inbox. I'm sure you have your own opinions about oh it. But goodness. for fans of the holiday plant, it is National Poinsettia or Poinsettia Day. Aside from <laughs> Christmas trees, they are perhaps the most recognizable plants of the holiday season. And we've gone a little crazy in the newsroom yeah. Yeah. Check here them out. in the studio. We love them, though. We've decorated the whole studio with them. National Poinsettia Day is observed every year on December 12th. Why that? date in particular? Well, according to nationaldaycalendar.com, it was on December 12th that Joel Roberts Poinsett, the man responsible for bringing the plant to America, passed away. There you okay. go. So there's your little trivia, so, your little trivia so tip nice. for the day. so nice. If anyone can count how many are actually in the studio. I think someone did. And message me. No, no, I want a viewer who like oh. actually watches all the shots. You will get an autographed picture of Penny, which this is, is worth <laughs> nothing, but I am so curious. I have no idea how many are in the studio, so if someone's actually watching. Man, this count. is such the interactive show. I want show. an autographed this picture of Penny. <laughs> She's going to count them. Going Susan sends an anonymous email. Yeah. The uh, thing we're all going to be dealing with whether it's poinsettia accounting or not, is the ice. Wow, there was the just ice. enough rain today yeah. to just really enough. slick things up. And temperatures have been falling, so it's kind of got that crunchy feeling mm -hmm. right now. Spots are slick on the road, so please be careful as you're heading on out. We'll take a closer look at your full forecast right after the break.
So it was a little dreary outside today, a little cloudy. I know some people were hoping to maybe see a little bit of snow. We did have some snow come north of Dane County, passing through Camp Douglas and the Dells. But right now, looking at our high resolution Doppler, uh, nothing falling from the sky. We do have some, some drizzle and spots that our, our Doppler really isn't picking up. But uh, outside of that, nothing really falling for us currently. That freezing drizzle that we had earlier and, and just a little bit of rain along the state line. Now making roads a little slick for us. So please give yourself a little extra time for the drive home because things might get a little messy. If you are looking for some snow, you are going to have to travel pretty far to the north. The UP right now, a lot of snow on the ground. Wausau and Rhinelander, uh, several inches of snow. Even if you travel a little further south, actually, into parts of northern Illinois, they have some snow. They're expecting to see some more come through this weekend and early next week. Not so much of a threat for us. We aren't expecting any more precipitation for the next several hours. That's the good news. Our probability has dropped quite a bit. Picks up a little bit early in the morning tomorrow just for the chance to see a few flurries pass through, but not a great opportunity. A for any accumulation or B for any sort of major event to pass overnight heading into our Friday. Mostly cloudy right now with a breeze from the south. Some light flurries still possible well north of the Dells this evening. Overnight we stay mostly cloudy. That chance for flurries again not even coming through really on our models, just maybe squeezing a little bit of moisture out of the atmosphere. A few flurries possible. For Friday, we're still mostly cloudy. There's going to be the chance for some lighter snow to develop late in the evening and overnight. Notice uh, for your drive home, we're still dry and mostly cloudy, but that light snow chance will start to creep in from west to east. It does seem like it could become a little tighter band passing on through, which means uh, some areas might have a little reduced visibility at times. But with this latest model run, we really don't have much of a band. Most of it's just some spotty snow showers to the north of Dane County. Pretty we're going to keep a close eye on things uh, really from about five until midnight or so. So in the evening for Friday, the chance to have that snow pass on through Friday night. We stay mostly cloudy Saturday, also mostly cloudy with again another chance for some light snowfall early in the day, uh, but not a lot coming in for us. And in the afternoon, we'll start to watch that cloud coverage break on up right now. We're at 37, which is above average. It feels closer to 31, though. Uh, so wind chill not as much of a factor today because our wind speed has, have stayed in the single digits from the south southwest so that's that warmer air moving in 37 in the middle of december is not too bad of a spot with this mostly cloudy sky overnight temperatures dropping to the upper 20s uh, mostly cloudy sky with the chance for some flurries maybe some drizzle and spots but a really really small chance our breeze is going to shift so it becomes a little more of a west northwest breeze uh, by friday morning so temperatures for friday will back off just a little bit for some areas and along the state line right now we're in the lower 40s we won't hop up quite as much for Friday. Uh, looking ahead to Friday afternoon, still mostly cloudy again. that chance later on in the day to have some flurries, maybe a little drizzle opportunity passing on through, but most of that is going to stay north of Dane County. Temperatures will be in the mid thirties for Friday with a light and variable breeze. So that breeze keeps backing off, heading towards the end of the week, which is great because I don't like talking about the wind chill. I hate when it feels colder than it is outside. 36, the high for Friday. Saturday and Sunday will be a little colder. So again, those temperatures backing off. A uh, small chance for some snow early on Saturday, but not really enough to, to cancel any plans. Close to freezing for afternoon highs on Saturday. We drop to the 20s for afternoon highs. Sunday, the second half of the weekend, brings sunshine, and we get to enjoy the sunshine into the start of next week. Notice there in the text, a lot of chances for some flurries, but no real opportunity for accumulating snow into next week. It seems like the air is just going to be a little dry. Uh, temperatures are also going to be a little cold outside. So Christmas still quite a ways off. But when we see that dry trend, people start mm -hmm. fretting if we're going to have a white Christmas or not. And uh, at least in the next 10 days, we don't have anything measurable marching in. All right. Good to know, I guess. I guess yeah. that's good. I don't know. I'm team white Christmas, of course, yeah. um, but I like the get it in, get it cleaned up, and then let <laughs> everyone enjoy Christmas. A so. lot exactly. of people won't think about skiing this time of year absolutely. and snowmobiling. You've got to head north. You've got to head it's north for north. snowmobiling, absolutely. Uh, but the ski hills have been pumping out snow. This colder weather yeah. has been really, really good for Tyrol. Yeah, yeah. That also, that's awesome. Thanks, Dana. Yeah, thank uh -huh. you, Dana. Go ahead. So <laughs> Some people are lining up to pay to walk rescue dogs. Oh, this has me written all over I it. Know. It's part <laughs> of a program that allows customers to rent a dog for a hike and help give the animal a second chance at life. Chris Martinez explains. These are real rescue dogs. These are um, not necessarily happy-go-lucky animals. In the hands of caring strangers, these shelter dogs are getting a second chance. These are rescue dogs. 
and they don't have the best behavior. They've been abused, neglected, any number of things. Ryan Boyd says correcting that behavior is one of the reasons for this rescue dog hike. Each week, walkers pay $45 each to take the animals on a two-hour climb through Hollywood's Runyon Canyon. Every walker takes a turn with each dog, and after several times out, Boyd says the once skittish animals turn over a new leaf. You can just see the behavior improve, 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 and then the dog's adoptable. The walk is booked online through Airbnb experiences, and all the money raised goes to Free Animal Doctor, a nonprofit that provides life saving surgeries for ill and injured rescue dogs. A majority of the walkers are tourists, like Paul Westeroff. The dog owner from Germany was missing his pet back home and saw this as a chance to scratch that itch. It's a perfect opportunity being out in the nature, having, spending time with a dog. All right, Brownie, doing good. So far, the walks have led to the adoptions of dozens of animals, and the hikes are growing, with as many as a couple dozen walkers now signing up each week. They get to hang out with dogs, rescue dogs, and they get to have a positive social impact. An impact that will ultimately save lives. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Fundraiser and Great training in one. Idea. Nice yeah. to see everybody in shorts, too. <laughs> I know, right? The program has become so popular, they're now expanding their walks to other areas of California, including a hike near San Diego. Very nice. Well, when we come back, an update on the tragic story of a toddler who fell to her death from a cruise ship. The young girl's family has now filed a lawsuit insisting the cruise line could have prevented the accident. We'll have the latest when Live at 4 continues.
Here's a live look on this Thursday afternoon. East Wash and Stoughton Road. Traffic moving, no problems. You know, it's a little slippery out there. Just yeah. slow down this Stoughton afternoon. Stoughton Road was one of the spots that did have a crash that, earlier. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. A state lawmaker is trying to toughen laws for uninsured and unlicensed drivers in Wisconsin. The Republican lawmaker supporting this bill says here in Wisconsin, law enforcement issues more than 80,000 tickets to drivers who don't have insurance or active licenses, and that was last year alone. Last month, a Kenosha driver caused a crash on I-94 that shut down part of the interstate for 10 hours. Records show that driver, Angel Santiago, had a suspended license and no insurance. He was ticketed $200 for each offense but is not required to appear in court. In February, another driver, Teron Claiborne, was driving with a suspended license when he hit and killed a Milwaukee DPW worker. It was a guy who had been ticketed 31 times for driving without a driver's license and was still driving on the road. So he faced no penalties, and now Mr. Rodriguez is dead as a result of it. The representative you just heard from there is now working on a bill that would require a car be impounded if the driver is caught without dr driving without a license. That is, it would also increase the fine for driving without insurance and require drivers to prove to the state that they are in fact insured. The parents of a toddler who fell to her death from an open cruise ship window have filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the cruise line. Chloe Wiegand's family blames Royal Caribbean for failing to provide reasonably safe ch children entertainment areas, including reasonably safe windows. The girl's grandfather, Sam Anello, says he lifted the child to what he thought was a closed window when she fell from his arms. Anello is charged with negligent homicide. David Begno spoke with the girl's parents. One of the things that disappoints me about all of it in losing Chloe is that I think when you Google her name, all you're going to see is things about court cases and people really forget that this was a living, breathing human being, part of our family, an actual person that's been lost. There will be people who watch this who say, I don't understand why they're suing. What would you say? Because Royal Caribbean played a major role in our daughter's death and because that condition shouldn't have existed. I mean, we've said that since the beginning. Attorney Michael Winkleman is representing the family in their lawsuit against Royal Caribbean. You believe the death of Chloe was an accident? Yes. But then why sue the cruise line? Because they could have and should have done more to protect Chloe and to protect other kids. He argues that this specific cruise ship, Freedom of the Seas, did not comply with industry safety standards, including fall prevention window guards and screens, and a device that would have limited the window opening to four inches. It's our clear allegation in the complaint that they either knew about these window safety, window fall prevention codes, or should have known about them, because it's the industry standard. If they would have followed the safety codes and updated their ship, Mm -hmm. uh, all their ships, um, and it never would have happened. She'd still be here today. We want them to fix their cruise ship so that no other kids get hurt. Chloe's grandfather, Sam Anello, spoke very briefly at the news conference Wednesday. I sit here broken, and we all sit here broken. A, a lot of people have reached out to me and said, does the family support Sam? Of course we do. We've always been a family. We've continued to spend time together weekly. We continue to share dinners together. It's just tough. She's my little girl. And she was the light of my life. And I don't have her around anymore. In a statement, Royal Caribbean says its hearts go out to the family and that the company has no comment on the civil filing. Chloe's grandfather is due back in court next week. Chloe's mother, who is a prosecutor herself, says the family never wanted charges filed against Anello. Just a terrible situation. Sad story. Yeah. When we come back, Mr. Grant himself is in Madison this weekend. A, a Hollywood legend is starring in a play at the Bartell Theater and playing what else? God. <laughs> Our conversation with actor Ed Asner when Live at Four continues.
Well, there aren't any accidents on the Beltline right now, but does seem to be moving along a little slower than usual on the east and westbound side. Actually, I was just watching the westbound side, the left lane. People were stopping there a second ago. Again, I uh, don't see any accidents coming in house, but things are going a little slower for us. The Stitch Hatchery Road stretching past that westbound speeds do pick back up. But on the eastbound side, things are really slowing on down for most of the Beltline and then finally picking back up closer to John Nolan. Middleton looking a little slow also on 12. Uh, downtown Wanakee should be fairly smooth. Just a few more more cars on the road, of course, around this time and then heading on the interstate all the way down to the state line uh, looks OK. From Jadesville to the Beltline, 25 minutes, 17 minutes to get from Sox City to Middleton and from Sun Prairie to downtown still at 16 minutes this evening. That's a quick look at traffic. Dana, thank you. Popeye's chicken sandwich, as you probably heard, was so popular <laughs> this year that it's putting the Cajun concoction on a Christmas sweater. The orange and white striped sweater features red Christmas trees, snowflakes, and of course, chicken sandwiches. <laughs> they go on sale starting Wednesday at uglychristmassweaters.com slash Popeye. Uh, Popeye's, they're $44.95. Popeye's calls this next chapter of the chicken sandwich wars, quote, the ultimate icebreaker. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, these days, for younger people anyway, he's probably better known as Santa Claus from the classic movie Elf. Or Carl Fredrickson from the Pixar movie Up. However, to many, he will always be Lou Grant from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Hollywood legend Ed Asner stopped by the Live at Four studios yesterday with our Michael Bruno ahead of his performance as God <laughs> at the Bartell Theater. So we have a very special guest in the studio today, and who, he's none other than the inimitable man Tell of the me. hour. Give us a hint. I don't know. Do you know who he is? No, I don't I, know. I hear he's playing God. I look, I'm, uh, <laughs> not easy to find God these days. <laughs> but he's right here. Ed Asner is in town. Welcome to you? Madison. I you, I Tell us a little bit about the show you're doing here in Madison. Well, I play God, which is, you know, to be expected. We drop down to communities and we find uh, couples that were once together as lovers and then split because they couldn't agree on the socio-political ideas. So in this particular case, the woman is more the reactionary, the man is more the liberal, and we're here to... Uh, um, Create a path for the world to follow. Yeah. So it's a very timely show. Yeah, no kidding. A, a political. Oh, yes. How did this project come to you? It's, uh, uh, well, Samuel Joseph Warren and uh, what the hell's his name there? The, uh, boy, that shirt looks good on TV. <laughs> it sure does. It really looks good. I, I'll have to get some more of those. But I, 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 the, the sleeves are too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil Proctor is his name. He ran Fireside Theater, a revolutionary theater, uh, uh, comedic theater on the radio. And San and Joseph Warren, and they wrote this play, and they, uh, they only ever witnessed me as God. Uh, that's, uh, that's what most people do that. Well, you have had such an amazing career. It's only an hour-long show. Yeah. But most people remember you, of course, as Lou Grant, Mr. Grant. Do you, do you like that when people, uh, what's it like for you when people ask you about the Mary Tyler Moore Show? Well, I, uh, I appreciate it. I like it. I, uh, I am ever grateful. So, of course, a lot of young kids know you as the wonderful voice in Up. Yes. What was that like working on that? Just doing the voice? You could go in your pajamas and do that, couldn't you? Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. I bet. It, it was a great experience. Pete Doctor was a genius in, in creating it. How do you like live theater compared to the stuff you've been doing as of late? It's all right. Yeah. Uh, I, I draw strength from the audience. Sure. You've already sold out two of the shows, I understand, and mm -hmm. you're adding another one in on, uh, on Friday afternoon That's because right. everybody wants to see you playing God. Well, I, I, I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I do a definitive God. I've, uh, I've, I, I truly wake up the, the masses. Also, you know, my book is out this week. Tell us about that. Well, it's called Son of a Junkman, which is what my father was. And uh, 
It's my uh, first utterance of who I am. Wow. Oh, well, that, mm. so it's your story. It's your personal story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you, you are. You coming to the show? Sure. When? When? Yeah, when, when? when? Yeah, I'm... how many times do I have to ask you? Six. Six. <laughs> Six times you're Six coming. Six times. Oh, that's, boy. that's the budget. We're, that's we're it. We're sick of seeing you. That's it. <laughs> I'll be sick of seeing you. <laughs> what? what? It's this Thursday and two shows on Friday. Correct? I don't know. <laughs> that's correct. He just that's shows what, up when they tell him to. That's what we'll say. I'm God not, help us starring the ticket wonderful ticket. Ed Asner. I don't take tickets. <laughs> at the Bartell <laughs> Theater yeah. in downtown Madison, Wisconsin. Oh. Thank you. Thanks for being oh, here. Oh. Enjoy your time in Madison. Have a mm. wonderful show. It was an experience. Tickets are still available for tomorrow's 3.30 afternoon performance of God Help Us. You can get tickets by going to the bartelltheater.org. He's 90 years old. Unbelievable. Five children, lives in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to read his book and get yeah. more of the insight. He's had such an incredible career. An unbelievable one, yeah, yeah. for sure. Welcome to Madison. Yeah. Break a leg. <laughs> we'll be right back. There's still some of that freezing drizzle out there. Some drizzle might be possible, but we're really not picking much up on our radar right now. So the likelihood of anything falling pretty slim. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if you maybe see a few raindrops on the windshield. But again, just, just some drizzle. Most of the moisture is out of here. Doppler's quiet. Temperature-wise, we're still at 43 in Janesville and 37 in Madison. We'll drop to the upper 20s overnight. So not quite as cold overnight. Another cloudy day for Friday. That's good. I, that ice, again, just be careful just out be there. Careful. Go a little slow. It's out. a little slick in some spots. Yeah. All right, All right Dana, thank you. Mm -hmm. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Live at 4. We're going to get into the holiday spirit with two, not this, <laughs> two, two for Christmas is first. <laughs> It'll look a little different than that. Michael Bruno, though, heads to the Crucible for a preview of Hedwig and the Angry Itch.